Hello, hello. Let's see if I can get this thing to start here. Maybe. Yeah, I show it. Oh, you show it? Yep. Hi, LA Knife Life and Kyle and Winchester and Super K and Kyle again. And Kyle again. Excellent. Uh, Kyle, Justin's always late. It's his life. Don't worry. I'm always late. Were we late? Yeah. Mm. Well, it was... Oh. Thanks, Super K. I need to know oh, where my dogs. my stud is. Go, get out of here. Go lay down. Emma's Dad's literally mad at you. Emma's trying to walk through a space that's half the size of her body. Yeah, she's kind of a cow. <laughs> stud, you left work early to get here. Good. Yeah, Stud. He told me. Early to get here. Oh, Good. Jesus. Yeah. He said yesterday that he had a job and he was going to be late getting here. And I told him that that was actually a good thing because it was good for him to have a job. I'll allow that. Skipping work to be here with us? No, him having a job and not oh, being able oh, to make yeah. it. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's a good reason. Hey, Zach. Thank you. Thank you so much. We greatly appreciate it. Hi, Hilltop. BJ. BJ, what up? I'm kind of distracted to start, so sorry. I'm been skimming. <laughs> been skimming. Yeah. So. <laughs> Hi, Dark Gravity. How's everybody's weekend? I like got a bunch of crap on that blade. Mmm, kissy faces, BJ. Oh. I don't have a lovely voice. I hear it, and I think I sound like a turd. <laughs> well, I'm not quite sure what turds sound like but yeah i don't know either i don't think you sound like a turd i think you sound fine what's the knife with the blue clip uh this one She's right here a sexy russian b with that blue clip this is my first russian this is uh from mechanic knives and this is a full-on handmade custom russian knife in cpm s125v you can see the pivot there. It's got lightning strike carbon fiber with embedded aluminum wire. Dang, course, mean Gene, you're making all the moves on me. Of course, titanium liners and clip backspacer. And the clip and backspacer have orange peel titanium. So you have your Russian lady and it's mean gorgeous. I have mean Gene. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, oh my God. That's gross. Heard sound like water splashing. Yeah, true. Zach says 102 in Portland. Sorry about it. Yeah, well, I'm gonna I, watch the protests after dark. Yeah, sorry. I don't feel bad about that because it was brutally hot here yesterday. So welcome, Killer B. Why waste your time with Slicey anyway? <laughs> <laughs> he said he missed most of Slicey. Oh yeah, yeah, it'll be all right. So. I had Slicey Dicey's uh, live stream up <laughs> just as I was getting stuff set up. And just so everyone's aware, um, I saw several people, uh, you know, comment and saying hello to me and whatnot. And I greatly appreciate that. But when I jump on there and just, you know, type something and say hello, I, I don't even really look at the live stream after that because I'm getting everything set up. So don't think I was ignoring you. I'm just not reading the comments. Yeah, he's just listening i'm just listening with the volume turned up so uh, slicey gave me a shout out i was yeah i did a dance and justin <laughs> gave me a shitty look <laughs> well because she was acting like a dumbass uh, <laughs> we're in iowa freedom van but i heard slicey dicey talking about the buck marksman and he said something about uh someone at sk blades is no longer there and so they're not going to be making any more of these for a while uh this is the SK Blade. Shut up, Zach. Uh, Inferno, which was essentially the Grey Ghost, just a different colorway. Uh, but one of my all-time favorite EDC knives, faux show. No, I'm what not. What did Zach do? Not dancing. Uh, Zach said, "Sure, sure. We heard about it last week. Why you? Why you guys were late making comments oh, about yeah, that? Oh, yeah, yeah." 
Yeah, yeah. Now <sighs> she'll get all embarrassed again. That yeah. was pretty awesome because she got embarrassed immediately. It's private. I talk a game. I don't talk about <laughs> my game. <laughs> um, and also, Big Boar, he says, awesome, your first Russian. Did you name her Svetlana? Um, I haven't decided on a name yet, but, uh, but yeah, well, it's, it's definitely something. I'm thinking, have you guys seen the movie Anna? Uh, so her it's name scary. might be Anna, I maybe, know. I don't know. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you haven't seen the movie Anna, go check that out, and you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, because Anna was sexy and badass. So, you know, I feel like that just fits here. Should I leave? Huh? Should I go? No, you're fine. Wish you were my sister, Michelle, so you could tell these girls how it is. I don't know. Is Michelle cool? She want to be friends? Yeah, Amazon series. That's right. Movie in Amazon series. Oh, is it an Amazon series yeah. as well? Yeah, yeah, that's where we watched it. No, is that a that's not where we watched it. No, okay, well, I I watched the movie. Oh. And I'm not. Ta I didn't say Hannah. Oh, that's what a I was thinking. Anna, A N N A. Yeah. Not H A N N A. Okay. Um, is that a uh, Tucson in red and black? No. There's no two sons on the screen right at the moment. Manix? This is a Manix right here. Manix 2. Hannah on Amazon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much, Mean Jean. We greatly appreciate yes. that. Yes. Oh, true. I, you guys, we went to that same store the other day, and my purple Glock is gone. So yeah, but we're gonna get a different one. It's okay though. It's okay. We'll get her taken care of. Any Ferrum Forge knives coming on the table? I don't know if we have any Ferrum Forge knives. Do we? I mean, uh, I don't have shit. But I do have a couple Ferrum Forge knives, but I didn't get any of them out at the moment. Uh, here is the, uh, certificate of authenticity of the Russian. Oh, yeah, I'll take a Tiffany blue clock. Let me go beat some dogs. Hold on. I don't actually beat them, people. Yeah, no, she's gonna go talk very nice to them and ask them to stop barking. She's huh. convinced that they speak English. Huh. Walter knows it, English? Oh, okay. <laughs> here we go. You're about sick of sharpening knives, VJ. You've been at it for four hours. Jason, this is your first live here. Well, hey, welcome. Glad to have you. So hopefully you enjoy it. Uh, we, yeah. We're just here to have a good time, have a little fun, See? do some dumb stuff. Freedom Vans dog speak English. Mo, Make some our bad youngest. choices. He just learned a ball a word tonight, and it was ball. So you know, speaking English, teaching English, it's good times. Do you think I should get a Russian? I found one that I really like. Stud wants to know your son. Well, that's uh, he's been talking to me about it for days on Instagram. If he likes it, then go for it. If you want I, it, yeah, I don't know what to it. tell you. If, if it, yeah. Do you have any off-grid knives? Yes, yeah. My dogs don't speak it, but yeah, they do understand it. No, I do not have any off-grid knives. I have lots of knives <laughs> from many, many different companies uh, hey. and all sorts of stuff, but no, no off-grid knives. Get your puppy ass over here and sit down. So one knife we're going to take a look at tonight is this new one. And Zach was showing this off, and I think a lot of people jumped in on this. And this is the uh, Hogue Deca, uh, the Patriotic Smoky Mountain Knives exclusive. Uh, yeah, pretty cool knife. <laughs> and I've got a little deep carry clip on here. And I honestly, I found this in my uh, box of parts. I have no idea what that clip came off of. But we're going to, I just have it 
on there at the moment just to uh, test the fit. I had to adjust the holes a little bit in the clip to make it work. Uh, but, but I'm going to show you how to make this clip sit nice and uh, flush down in there. So we'll get to that in a few minutes. Gotcha, Jacob. We're also going to talk about this tonight. Um, we've got two bug outs here. And we're going to discuss what happened here. Because this is kind of an interesting situation. Hey, uh, Taz. How you doing? One thing that uh, I don't know if Chris is in here. Have you seen... Uh, <laughs> I really like Taz's comment. He said, historically, Russians have a rather casual relationship with maintenance and safety. That's correct, yes. Stud says that's the special bug out you were talking about, question mark? Uh, this is the special bug out that I was talking about, question mark. And we're going to get into what makes this special. So there's two bug outs here, and we're going to talk about them in here in a minute. We good, Andrew. We good. How you? But I don't know if uh, Chris is in here or not, or P EDC, uh, Pittsburgh EDC. <laughs> uh, he sent a package in. Uh, he sent me the information about it uh, a couple days ago. I think it was on Wednesday, if I remember correctly. And it did not show up in time. Uh, so COVID done did struck again. It did us dirty. Did us dirty. Uh, so we are going to, uh, we're not going to do the TSA tonight. We are going to do the TSA on Friday night, the last day of the month, July 31st. That's also going to be when we're going to pick the winners for my 2K giveaway. So there's been some additions to the giveaway. Uh, so that live stream um, I don't know what time would work the best, but we're going to do it on Friday. We're going to do a live show Friday night. Uh, we're open to suggestions on the time frame. So if you guys want to throw some times out there, uh, just remember we're central time. So take that into consideration, I guess. But but it doesn't have to be at 8 p.m. It could be uh, earlier or later. Uh, my wife doesn't have to work the next day, so she can actually stay up till. You know, maybe even 10 o'clock. We get crazy. It's a Friday night. Might stay up till 10. I don't know. We'll oh, just have to see. Oh, you got my fucking yuck yucks, huh? <laughs> you know. So, uh... <laughs> Thanks, L.A. Knife Wife. Yeah, she'll she'll definitely love a Tiffany Blue Pistol. And thank you very much, sir. Greatly appreciate that. Yes. L.A. Knife Life's also one of the patrons. So, thank you very much. Along with B.J. Hill and... Several other guys. Kyle, I see him there right at the moment. 8 p.m. is fine, Russ 8, says. 8 p.m. So so you guys are in favor of doing 8 p.m. on this <laughs> the next this this upcoming Friday evening, 8 p.m. What up, big Sean? That's what everybody wants to do. Because we're gonna have one comment gonna, about it so far, so. Okay. We're gonna pick the winners for the giveaway as well as do the TSA. So Taz is one day in the future, so I watch till 3 a.m. every night, so don't matter to me. You need to get sleep, son. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you can't talk. <laughs> what? You're up late every night, too. Yeah. Um, well, I'm just agreeing with what you, you said oh. that he needs to get some sleep, and you say that shit to me all the time. Yeah, I do. So, we're going to do this oh, right here. Good father, Berg. Good father. Steve Kluver says 8 p.m. Central is good. Yeah, it seems like the, the consensus is... Okay. That's... Steve has got an entry in the TSA. So, if anybody else wants to enter in the TSA, you got until Friday uh, to have your knife in my P.O. box. Uh, you can see the, the rules and entry stuff there, if that's what you want to do. And... Uh, this month's steel was either LC200N or Vanex. So, so anyway, uh, I'm going to show you here real quick. So on the standard pocket clip, it, it might be kind of hard to see this, but there's a little recess portion where the pocket clip sits down in the G10. And in order to make this uh, fit a deep carry clip, and it doesn't really matter which clip you use, uh, like on this... Deca, I, this is a Civivi deep carry clip. One second. 
Mean Jean. Yeah, we did see your comment, and that's in the rules. So, yeah, they have to be sharp, and they can't be factory edges. No, it's not really in the rules. Oh. Uh, I, I have no way to tell that. Oh, well. Somebody yeah. could lie about that. I have, well, There's sure, no way I could, could tell. Lie. But, but, yeah, I mean, if someone were to, you know, every great once in a while, there's a factory edge that does a really, really good job like this Hogue did the other day. Uh, but if you use this at all, that that screaming sharp out of the box uh, is going to be done. So if somebody used the knife for a little while and sent it in, they'd be doing themselves a disservice. Mm -hmm. So it's really kind of a moot point. But but anyway, um, the uh, the Civivi deep carry clip works excellent on the Hogue Deca. I've actually ordered uh, the mini Civivi deep carry clip for this knife. Um, so I don't know, it'll probably be a week or so, or maybe two before I get it. So in the meantime, I'm going to put a different clip on there, but the, uh, the process that I'm about to do here, which I have done on this knife is the same and I'll show you how I do this. So anybody that gets a DECA and you want to put a deep carry clip on it, there's several different, uh, Kershaw and ZT clips that will fit. Of course, the Civivi clips will fit as well. And then... Like I said, I'm not even sure exactly what this clip is off of, but it was in my box and it seems to work and fit here pretty decently. So we're gonna we're gonna put her down. Hi, Joseph. Scott, you get a girlfriend? Where did you order it from? Order what from? I don't know. Zach asked. I don't know. The knife. The Deca. Smoky Mountain Knife Works. But I'm pretty sure he knows that because he bought one too, and that's the only place you can get it. Oh, status of the Air Force and the Sun. Yeah, his date has been pushed back, so we're looking at September 15th. Yeah. Uh, well, I think mid September. Jose, Jose said September 5th. 5th. Oh, okay. Yeah. Roughly, kind of up in the air with all the business still, but that's what it's looking like September sometime. Thank you for asking. Yeah, it's been kind of a mess. So we found out that uh, the uh, Air Force is operating at 30% capacity for their boot camp. And that's kind of a, a mess. Scott ordered a girlfriend, Taz. Where did you order the mini deep carry Civivi pocket? Oh, from Civivi. You just go on to Civivi's website and then click the warranty tab. Uh, and it's actually uh, we or Civivi, it doesn't matter. It go, they all go to the same place. It's actually like service at weknives.com, I think, something like that. Uh, but send them an email and tell them what knife you want the pocket clip for. And then they will send you back payment instructions. And they're like, they're like 12 bucks, a 10 or 10 to 12 dollars, depending on which clip you're getting. Uh, just to let you know, the clip that I ordered for this knife is the deep carry clip for the Civivi McKenna. So that's the short one. So it's like a mini mini deep carry on a bug out. Very, very similar. Hi, Lavender Pants. One other thing that I wanted to bring up on this knife, because several people, I've heard, I've heard tons of reviewers say it, and therefore I've heard tons of other people say it, and a bunch of people in comments have said it, Everybody freaks out about the screws on this knife. And everybody says, oh my God, that thing has so many screws in it. And the reality is it has one extra screw per side more than the bug out has. Just one. Uh, and so, uh, you know, we could certainly have the conversation on whether or not it's even needed. But I think everyone fails to, to understand that the bug out has a screw up here for the stop pin oh. that the DECA does not. That, Danny. My bad. So, so there's still, uh, it's, we're only talking one extra screw here. We have and, a couple of people that want to know about the TSA, so okay. you can talk about it. Yeah, I'll, I'll go back to that in just a moment. So, we're going to address the screw issue here. So, if you look at the body screws on the bug out, you have one, two, three body screws, uh, the, the stop pin, and then two back here. And then on the Hogue, you have one, two, three body screws. Same number of screws, they're just in a different location. And then on the Benchmade, they only have one screw that's holding the liners in here. And on the Hogue, they have two. 
So you get one extra screw per side. Now, it may look a little different because Hogue puts the two, they fill the holes that Benchmade doesn't here. So That's for the pocket said, clip. That's what she said, Zach. <laughs> filled holes? No. He oh. said, I've gotten used to the one extra screw. Yeah, me too. Like, I understand. I mean, it looks a little busy or whatever, but the, the way people act about it, it just, uh, I, I don't think anybody actually looks at the difference here because it's only one screw that's the only difference is one screw and i feel like it's just a little blown out of proportion it's possible stud it just depends on you know where it's coming from and what speed you choose but a knife might make it by friday oh just yeah for check. sure um louis says he finally got his smock uh oh today, yeah I saw and he loves it Wonderful. I saw that for, there was out of, I sent like 24 or 25 packages all in the same day. And there were three of them that for whatever reason took way longer because most everybody else got their stuff in two days. Uh, but there were two or three and, I, and Louie, I saw that yours was one of them uh, that took longer for some reason. I'm allergic to knives. That's not true. Um, we okay what was it? okay does the deca flex in the scales like the bug out no it does not and it's because the scales are much more robust uh and it has more screws in it and they're g10 instead of frn uh but you can see there is i mean the the bug out is noticeably thinner than the deca i mean still the deca is very thin and lightweight but the bug out is extreme in that department Oh, so, thank you, everyone. They're all you saying can, bless you. You can see here, I mean, I'm squeezing pretty hard, and it's rigid uh, on the bug out. You can you can touch. I can make them touch. So, you, yeah. The, you the, all are so kind. <laughs> the only knives that I know of that are like this is the bug out, and all the stuff, they're the TRM, Neutron, and Atom, and those knives are the same way, very flimsy. Uh, you can actually just kind of bend the knife around. Um, Taz says he changed his bug out to Flytanium G10 scales. Yep, and and that, that would certainly add a tremendous amount of rigidity or structure to the knife, no doubt. Stud says what he's thinking about submitting for the TSA has a super toothy edge on it. He didn't know how that would affect it. You're just going to have to try it and find out. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm not going to give uh Louis wasn't worried at all. He just and, wanted to play with it. <laughs> tricks and uh, tips like that, I guess. Um, so, you know, the, all the... There's, there's different ways to... Uh, to uh, do different things on the sharpness tester. We'll just, I don't know how else to say it, but durga, you can durga, approach durga, it durga. in a bunch of different ways. Durga, 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 durga. Oh, no. Trying to get that damn screw in there. You've I've cut a few apples with it since then. Okay. Well, you better assess and resharpen, perhaps. Yeah, I would say if you're gonna if you're gonna put in an entry for TSA, I would uh, you know sharpen it and and not cut anything with it. Like when the knives show up here, I, I don't open them until we go to do the testing. So uh, I well, if they're taped up individually or whatever, mm -hmm. I'll leave them taped up. But even if it's something that I physically open the package i don't open the knife blade until the time comes what's that clip point carbon knife the clip point carbon knife hold on just a second might need some mod work carlin just email the old uh yeah send me an email info at ocd for edc Oh, well, thank you, Jacob. I'm glad to be a part of this community that I crap on regularly because knives are stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah, you boys can have your toys. I don't care. 
if you guys watched the last unboxing I did with my wife, we opened up this knife right here, the little Kaiser Assassin. And Molly actually liked this one right out of the gate. She's actually asked me if we could do some anodizing on this and then this just be hers. So, so she liked this one right out of the box. I did. It felt good in my hand hole. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, so on the DECA, uh, you can see here now that clip is sitting flush down in the G10. Uh, like it should from the from the factory uh, and like I said I'm gonna switch this to the Civivi probably I don't know we'll, we'll try this one and see how it works out it doesn't look bad on there um, but we'll see uh, it's definitely a little sh shorter than the stock uh, clip the stock clip came down to a, in this area here but yeah definitely a cool knife and I'm really digging the scales on it I liked the uh, the OG one with the G mask, blue G mascus. <clears throat> this is a great knife, and with the Civivi clip on there, it just uh, works perfectly. This clip's great. It's great in hand. It's great in and out of the pocket, and there's no branding on it or anything, so it just it works really well in my opinion. One of the better clips for this knife, but uh, this one doesn't look bad either, and there's no branding on it either, so. Yeah, I look forward to it. So I'll report back and let you guys know how this clip works on that thing. Tight, bro. Uh, Why real can't quick, everyone... what were the questions about the TSA? Oh, they just want an overview of how it works and stuff. And uh, they want to know where they can go to see the rules and information. So if you go and check out my videos, uh, go to my video library and just click on any one of the videos that has TSA in the title. And the TSA stands for the sharpest apex. Uh, the, all the official rules will be in the video description on all of the TSA videos. And all it is, it's a sharpening competition where you we select a steel for that month. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a, an attempt to get you guys involved and have a good time and kind of make a fun game. Uh, <clears throat> I give away prizes. Uh, we do just the overall sharpest knife. The winner uh, gets a prize. And then also we draw out of all the entries for the month. We draw out of a, a hat the remaining uh, contestants. And and all the prizes are valued at at least uh, $50. So, yeah. It's uh, pretty cool. And I've got, a, I've got the, the actual uh, best certified sharpness tester that I break out and we test the edges on everyone's knives. Bye, Troy. So, have a good night at work. Yeah, have fun at work, Troy. Uh, it's a good time and, and it's fun. And, and uh, yeah, so if anybody wants to get involved, like I said, uh, you'll have until Friday to get your knives here. If you want to get in on this month's TSA, if not, and you want to see how it goes, tune in on uh, Friday night. We'll do the TSA competition and we'll spin the wheel to choose next month's steal. And it should be a good time. Penny, are you here? You weren't here last week. I miss oh, you. I just kicked the... <laughs> just actually want to make sure everything's cool. Kick the whole setup here. Way to go. Way to go. Yeah. Well, you know. <clears throat> I do what I can. So real quick, before we get into the bug out stuff. Oh, she's here. Good. I told uh, one of my viewers uh, that I would show two knives real quick <clears throat> because he would like to pick up one of these. For those that don't know, this is the Tucson TS-186 Kingfisher. It is a Mazwan Mokhtar design. It's a front flipper. Bye, Larry. Uh, but it's somewhat deceiving because it has this large uh, blade opening hole. This here is the Tucson TS-129. Thank you, BJ. That's so nice. BJ, thank you, sir. <laughs> yes, it is a humbling experience for sure. That The sharpness tester uh, does not discriminate. It doesn't care how how uh, good you think you are with freehand or, or KME or what, how, it doesn't matter how you sharpen your knives. Um, it separates the men from the boys. And I actually have a surprise coming up for next month, which I'll let you in on uh, when we get there. 
but it should be quite entertaining. Um, I at least I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So we'll we'll see. What are that? This is the uh, uh, Tepe Design Killage, and it's an amazing knife. I'll have a review uh, the name coming up. Alone is the best. Yeah. I have a review coming up on this very, very soon, but it is an absolutely gorgeous knife. Uh, this is designed by Mr. Sean Hassan at Tepe Designs. He's an awesome guy. You can check him out on Instagram. He does a lot of Tucson designs right, as Ogon. well. Welcome. Uh, definitely one of my favorite knife designers and just a really, really cool guy. Uh, he also did... Yes, Killage, Taz. He also did... This is one of my favorites here this is the tepe design hornet 2 and this thing is a big boy knife four inch blade it's a beast i love it it's awesome it's all carbon fiber it's just a gorgeous gorgeous knife so um and he's one of the only man or only designers that i know of you know several guys are putting the ball in their pocket clip but on tepe's designs the ball actually spins so it's super cool and it's captured in there in the titanium uh, on both the Killage and the Hornet 2. The ball spins, uh, which makes a difference going in and out of the pocket. These things, <laughs> for a milled titanium clip, both knives are fantastic in and out of the pocket. Jason says, I've never been in one, but if I ever gotten a knife fight, I want a Killage. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So back to the <laughs> discussion of the 129 and the 186. Uh, so I was telling William earlier that he, he's not uh, convinced or, or comfortable at this point in saying that for sure he's going to like a front flipper. And so I think, and this was just my own uh, thought process, but I was fairly confident that he was looking at this thinking, well, if, if I don't like the front flipper portion, then it's got this blade <laughs> hole that I can use for flicking it open. And to, to a certain extent, that is true, although, the like you can see here, the detent is pretty strong, which is awesome for the front flipper. It pops out great, uh, but the access to this hole is not very good. Uh, I can't get it at all with my right hand on the bottom. Oh, I did get it there. You uh, lie. Yeah, well left-handed, I can do it easier because you have more access. Uh, the difference in the lock bar, uh, you know, the the show side gives you more access to that hole than the, the lock bar side. So in my left hand, it's easier to get at that hole. Uh, but either way, and, and this is just my hand too. I mean, someone else's fingers might be able to get down in there better than mine. Uh, the scales are a little bit thick. Uh, they're they're contoured, but they're a little bit thick. So you've got, there's some distance to get down in there. Uh, however, the front flipper portion on this blade works <laughs> Big, fantastic. Big Sean said I like to get at the hole, too. Yeah. Yeah, no <laughs> doubt. No doubt. Lol. <laughs> um, Hi, Chad. So the 129, you have better access to the hole on the 129. It's easier to, to do the spidey flicking. Uh, and the front flipper certainly works just fine on the 129. But between the two, I would say if you have the 129 wow. and you have a hard time use, utilizing the front flipper, uh, chances are the 186 will work better for you just because the geometry is better on the front flipper portion. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you don't have any troubles front flipping the 129, you certainly will not have any troubles with the 186. <laughs> so I told William that I would talk about these two knives and just kind of talk about the differences, the front flipper versus the opening hole. Uh, the opening hole is more accessible on the 129, but the front flipper is better geometry uh, on the 186. So there you go. <laughs> Easy access hole can be a little sketchy. Awesome knives. Both are fantastic. Both are two thumbs up. Highly recommend both of these knives if you're interested in either one of them. Okay, now, Ooh, you're we're going to talk about this. <laughs> what? I said, oh, you're boring me. I'm boring you? Yeah. Well, what do you want to talk about? I don't know. I'm just giving you shit because I yawned. Okay. 
Well, you yawn because it's past your bedtime because you're old. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's going on there. No, nine. I have till nine o'clock. It's just... <clears throat> Yeah, Yawns well, that's leading up to twenty four minutes away. I know, and Slicey keeps fucking it up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So we're going to talk about this right here. So um, I just want to say real quick, this here, I know the difference between these two boxes, um, and mainly because <laughs> mine came uh, with this fifty two thirteen on it. Uh, that was from the store, and then there's also a date code. Did you talk to that guy? Yes. Okay. Yes, I've discussed this with him. All right. Him. Just Why? Cover. I'm the marketing department and oh. the legal department. Yeah. So, so this this one, the box marked 5213. This is a bug out that I personally had. You can see here it's the 535. And real quick, this is, you know, the bug out. You get this little satchel. You get the access uh lock little card and then the little user and care manual right so those are those are your items that came in the box with the 535 bug out <laughs> okay now this bug out you guys see the box in this box we have let me get the stuff out here First and foremost, we have the user and care manual right there. We have the access card. We have the little nutsack. No, he didn't mix it up, Mikey. Nope, I didn't mix them up, I promise. And there is the knife. Here is the box. So real quick. Here's the two boxes, the foam inside of them. Um, Hi, Peter. These are, oh, let me flip this one around. Here's the logos on the box. Now, this one, this box has a piece of packing tape that runs right there, so you might see a glare there uh, on the packing tape, but, but you can see the two logos. Um, it there it's crazy how similar these are uh the lids to the boxes you can see you can see the two decals there and then i'll flip them this way so you can see the manufactured dates and the inside of the boxes <clears throat> So, anyway. Yeah. That's my 52. Okay. One so, question is, what, what, one's a ripoff and one's a clone? I'm saying, how about you guys tell us? Okay, so and here... this isn't for anything, just for fun. Yeah, we're, I, well, I'm just... Well, a couple of things. I want... So, here's the, here's the situation at hand. So, I was contacted by a viewer... And he offered to trade me a 535 bug out for one of the Enduras that I had on my knife sale here a week and a half or two weeks ago, whatever it was. <laughs> so we, uh, you know, went back and forth um, and we came to an agreement on one of the backlock spider codes that I had. And he said, OK, great, I'm going to send you the knife. And I said, OK, great. And he sent the knife. He sent me uh tracking information and the knife showed up the other day so i get the knife and it's <laughs> BJ. it's this knife right here and he had told me that the knife uh cosmetically wasn't absolutely perfect uh like there were some uh scratches on the thumb stud uh but ultimately here is the knife uh you know the frn isn't all scratched up you can see the thumb stud there and the thumb stud on this side. Uh, pocket clip's not really worn too much. Um, the hardware, for for no more wear than what's on the knife itself, the thing that threw up a red flag for me was, one, the thumb stud looks strange um, in the way that the scratches are, and two, uh, the uh, black paint on the hardware, or the black uh, hardware, uh, it 
shows abnormal wear for the wear that's on the knife. Now, here's the blade and the logo on the blade. Let me, uh, I'll throw out the real bug out so you can see and compare the logos. Uh, here. Yep, you were right, stud. So there's the two <laughs> logos. And so after I started doing a lot of really careful inspection on this knife, um, I started to see minor little things that were off and different. And uh, Chad says the pocket clip location is a dead giveaway, too. The pocket clip location. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? I don't what? know. That's just what he said. What's... What's different about the pocket clip location? Stud, no. I don't think you won the Russian lady. You're gonna... <laughs> um, you'll have to inform me more about the pocket clip location because I don't know... You're not seeing it? No, I don't see any differences at all. It even has, uh, from like where they stamped them out, there's like a little bit of dye tear on the sides of both clips. It has that. Well, um, is the pocket clip interchangeable? What do you mean? Like, can it go on the other side? Too? Yeah, for sure. Okay. Absolutely. So. Yeah, my, mine's set up left carry. This one's set up right hand carry. This is the fake one, just so you're aware. But mine is set up left side carry. Um, but anyway, so... The screw the, height. The screw height. Mm-hmm. I don't... Again, I don't know what you're saying there. Like, how, how the long the screws is, are? I don't know. Oh, uh, they're, they're almost identical. I mean, they're almost indistinguishable. I mean, maybe if I get, you know, my calipers, or it would take something better than calipers. I mean, I'd have to get a mic out and measure them. But the type of screws are identical. Uh, the clips, uh, you know, I haven't measured every single thing. But just by looking at them by eye, they're identical. Um, this, is, this is a remarkable copy. It, it's truly remarkable. Uh, one thing about it that threw it off for me was the font is slightly different size uh, on the S30V, if you guys can see this. Um, yeah, Dub Glock, the boxes both have the date. So, the, you know, it's one of those reasons that we were like, what in the heck? So if you guys can see there, the fake one, the font on the S30V is slightly larger and the letters are are not so uh, thick or fat. Um, Bye, stud. Later on, stud. Behave, Have a good listen one. to your mother and father. Uh, so I, I don't know what blade material this is, uh, but even the machining lines on the primary grind of the blade is remarkable like it, if i wouldn't have had another 535 here now the the thumb studs were a pretty dead giveaway and i'll talk about that in a moment but but i don't know how well you guys are going to be able to see this but hopefully you can see the little machining lines on the the primary grinds chad said that it's 8cr ltk tested it okay well he tested one like it. one like it yeah um so yeah whether i mean i have no idea uh i doubt very much that it's s30v and it wouldn't shock me one bit if it's 8cr but i have no idea who manufactured this or where it came from um louis the, all these little things led up to him finding out it was fake doing yeah. research and stuff so so if you look at the barrel spacers so mine is on the left uh the color is just ever so slightly off and and so all of these things there were several things that added up to me t saying okay i i have a gut feeling that this is a fake uh i you know the fact that the the screws you know mine arguably has more wear on the knife by looking at the scales but yet the hardware on mine uh, isn't really showing hardly anywhere at all. And this one, the hardware is showing tremendous amounts of wear, which, you know, I was thinking, well, maybe someone just 
rob the good looking hardware out of this one because he was going to trade it off or whatever. And I wanted to give the guy the benefit of the doubt. Like, you know, I wasn't trying to be an ass or anything, but, but one the biggest red flag for me was, so I was fairly confident that the thumb studs were painted uh, because of the way that they, the, it was chipping or scratched up. And so I stuck a T8 driver in there and the thumb stud was actually loose. It came right out, no problem at all. And they are 100% painted thumb studs. Um, and you can see on mine that uh, they are 100% anodized aluminum. So on the factory original bug out, you have anodized aluminum thumb studs. On this fake one here, they're still aluminum, but they are painted and not anodized. Yes, Nate, that's, <clears throat> Jason's right. It's a Russian custom. Um, and they have a question. Did you, or did the guy who traded you, did he know that it was a fake? No, he did not. Uh, what he said to me was, I asked him where he got the knife from. I told him I received the knife. I asked him where he got it from. And he told me uh, he got it from some other knife YouTuber. Um, I'm not going to blow anybody out. It's none of my business. Um, but it was another knife YouTuber that he got the knife from is what he said. Uh, he was fully under the impression that it was a real bug out. He, tra he traded for it. Um, and the knives that he traded were certainly... Uh, from what he's telling me, certainly we're in a price range like this was a brand new bug out. Uh, now, whether that guy had it and knew it was a fake or not, I have no idea. Uh, the other thing here, uh, and when you really start to dissect the packaging. Okay, Slicey. It wasn't you, huh? <laughs> no, it wasn't him. It wasn't him. It wasn't any of the, the main kind of guys that all that I talk to or or kind of you know have interactions with dark gravity says you can stick a small magnet to the access lock and the bug out has a titanium lock bar. yeah yeah that i don't know what this one is but it is non-ferrous metal so a magnet will not stick to it i already did those tests uh like i said this is a remarkable copy it is remarkable how good this thing is um and so, yeah, the lock bar in this one, again, I don't know if it's titanium or not, but it's definitely a non-ferrous metal. Yeah, uh, Zach says, not the channels you roll with. That's right. That's not. That's correct. Your posse is legit. Yeah, my posse on Broadway. <laughs> my posse yep. on Broadway. Uh, me and Kid Sensation. <laughs> I'm home away from home. Uh, anyway, the uh, on the bags here, the... You know, they're slightly, the fake one's slightly longer, uh, but really what, another thing that threw it mm. off, you can even see, hopefully you guys can see this, there's threads hanging off this one. And on mine, there really isn't. The stitching looks way better. This one looks like a, a child. Uh, don't mean to be insensitive there, but looks like a child did it, which, you know, quite possibly is the case. <clears throat> I said it looked yeah, like yeah, I yeah. did it. Yeah, I know, but, uh, <clears throat> but the other thing be... is... Equal the, to a child. The bench made on the actual bag itself, <clears throat> although it looks very, very similar. Uh, the fake one in the right light, it's shinier than the, the real one. Yeah, everything overall has a sheen to it. And then the the bead on the, the uh, rope and the little toggle and the rope itself all just feels cheaper you can see the bead is shaped slightly different uh so again i mean these are things that i no way would have been able to pick out unless i had the real thing right next to it to compare it to we'll try and get back to it nate uh but so the paperwork you know the 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 little sticker that or not the sticker but the little card the access lock card i mean I even went as, you can see the little, uh, where the perforations were, uh, where they popped this out, uh, where it was die cut, and they're in the same location. Uh, so, you know, maybe maybe this was stolen out of a real box, but I don't honestly think that it was, because when you look at it <laughs> super, super close, the sheen on the paper is slightly different. Um and then same thing with the, the two user and care manuals. 
um, that, you know, of course it's a copy and all the lettering and wording is all correct, but the, but the paper itself feels slightly different. I didn't feel the paper. Can I feel them? <clears throat> yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. You tell a little this difference. This one's rougher. This one's smoother. Right. right. And you, so you, there's, there's very, very minor differences, but like I said, you, there's, it's so close that if you didn't have the real one next to it, I don't know. I don't think anybody would be able to tell it apart. And if it wasn't for this being scratched up and and made me think like anodizing doesn't scratch like that, it just wouldn't look that way uh, if it were anodized. Uh, that and the action on this is not very good. Uh, and not only is the action not very good, but the the it could actually use to be tightened up just the tiniest amount. Mm, um, that sucks, Mean Gene. So. He said he ordered his first 940-1 on yes. Amazon, and it was counterfeit. And he honestly uh, couldn't tell until he looked at the standoffs were dark blue instead of bright blue. Yeah, that blows. And it, was it, where, did you buy it from a private seller, or was it? On Oh, yeah. I mean, on Amazon, it, it could come from... It wasn't Prime coming from the warehouse. Yeah, it wasn't a, you know, quote-unquote certified whatever. Yeah. That sucks, man. No, I don't think he did say what he traded, Kyle. Uh, he hasn't actually... You haven't actually traded anything for it. No, yet. no. So, I did not send. I told him that I wasn't going to send out the knife uh, until I got his knife in the mail. Um, and the reason I do that, just so anybody out there, if you ever want to trade knives with me, I'm totally on board. If we come up with a deal and we do the trade, that's great. No problems. But I am not going to put my knife in the mail until I receive yours. And the reason for that is, is that all trades are initiated from someone else to me. I don't go out looking for trades. People contact me and... And I got burned a long time ago, uh, and I'm just not going to do it again. So uh, yeah, I've had several people say, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, and I'm going to not give a shit until it actually shows up. Oh, that's good, Mean Gene. So, Amazon took it right back. Yeah, and, that, and that's great. Uh, um, Nate wants to see the rushing. Oh, yeah. We'll, yeah, we'll, I'll, we'll get to that in a moment. So anyway. I, you what know, about my feelings, Nate? What if I don't want to see the Russian anymore? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not out anything here, but this was really more, I just wanted to show just how remarkable these fakes are. Uh, it, because I, I honestly, I don't think, it, I, I even someone that sees literally hundreds or th thousands of knives, uh, you, you're going to be hard pressed to, to pick this out unless you have something else to compare it to. Louie wants you to dissect it. Well, it, I, it's still not his. Yeah, it's still not mine. And so I, I'm i hopefully going to be able to work a deal out because I would like to get this out of circulation. And at that point, when that happens, 100% we'll do a destructive test and we'll see if this thing even comes close to comparing. I would love to have the blade tested <laughs> and see, you know, PMI tested as well as Rockwell. Uh, and just to see, you know, and I've got the real one right here. They want we you to put it on the it sharpness tester. Oh, I have no idea what I... I don't know if it's... Oh, it's not sharp at all. Well, it's it's slightly sharp, but... Uh, so, yeah. I don't, I don't have any idea if the guy that owned it ever sharpened it or not. I know nothing about that part of it at all. Kyle, you're out of bowel movements? That's a problem, dude. He's out of bowel movements? He said I'm out of BM. Oh, a bench made. <laughs> yeah. I'm just giving him shit. Yeah. Go check it So. I'll run it against my bug out, BJ says. Is, is Zach still in here? Is Jack attack? Are you in here? Today says, he has a day off today, so he better be. Oh, nice. Yeah, he is. Nice. Have you seen a, a copy that's been this good before? Or is this something you come across often? Is Tell Zach, us, oh, Benchmade Master. Zach was telling me that Benchmade even gets clones sent in to them for, like, warranty work. Because people thought they got a real one. Oh, I bet. That's crazy. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm sure he is heated. Hollywood Tactical. I've come to the conclusion that since you're going to make clothes for me, make my hoot gooch line. Um, I have a favorite pair of jeans Ugh. that do have front pockets, and they're good ones. I could send them, and you could pull measurements from there. Who, who Gooch is going to be the line of clothing? Yeah. Well, then I get royalties. <laughs> no. Bullshit, that was mine. I Hoot own Gooch you. Is mine. I own you. <laughs> oh, boy, here we go. I'm sorry, BJ. I'm tired. I don't know. I I can't stop yawning. I, I don't really feel tired, but my brain's... You, you guys just up. have to give her a break. She's old. Okay. <laughs> yeah. First, I have to listen... About this stupid, dirty Russian that you got. Dirty? Yeah, I weekend. think you meant to say sexy. You meant dirty in a sexy Guys, way. Guys, he took me on a dinner date. And all he did was talk about his Russian the whole way. No, and it I sat did not. between us in the truck. That, that, that is um, oh, misrepresentation. Oh, says I have copyright on the hoot gooch. So, boom. Who? He said you do? Yeah, Slicey took my side. Your side? Okay, whatever. I was the one that said it. So I know, I, I know. Um, I, I mean, I, I, I'm not <laughs> arguing that you're the one that has a hoot gooch, but, you know. Correct, yeah. But, but as a term, hoot gooch and, and, uh. Why uh, killer poon, bee? And poon gooch, that's, that's where that started. Yeah. So we'll, uh, we'll, te we'll do the sharpness <laughs> test here of the old, uh, the, uh, fake, uh, bug out. So, <laughs> here we go, here we go. Possession is nine-tenths of the law. He didn't buy the Russian anything for dinner. She's a crackhead. It's sharper than I expected, but 190. One niner zero. Yep, one nine zero. So, uh, I have not disassembled this. I'm not sure. I mean, it's certainly, uh, I can see the phosphor bronze washers in there. But if there's anything else going on in there, you know, like a, like a, a real thin, uh, Teflon washer or something. <laughs> uh, but certainly the action is not nearly as good as my actual real deal bench made. What do you want for the Manix too? This one right there. Mm -hmm. It's not for sale. Didn't figure. Didn't figure. So the bug out, a eh, a eh, that was that was real sad, slicey. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the Russian, oh hey, do, do, do. <laughs> is is a gorgeous knife. Um, I think I'll probably end up softening all the edges just a little bit. She's a little little squared off in the corners, and this Russian, you know, like any good woman, will cause you some pain. <laughs> uh, most certainly will ab well you can see it right there it will absolutely cut the shit out of you uh back here if you run your finger there and also uh right here oop I'm not on camera right there literally that blade comes all the way to the end of the scales i could absolutely open the blade uh with my finger like that but action when i first got this it had lock stick um for a couple of, I, I don't know, I, I'm going to say for the first uh, 100 flips, maybe, I guess. I mean, I didn't count them, but. This is CPM 4V. Yep. That's the St. Nick's exclusive uh, Manix 2 in CPM 4V. Yeah, oh, thanks, Slicey. He's got, he's on my side. He doesn't get why you love the Russian so much. Oh, okay. That's fine. Well, the Russian is uh, CPM S one twenty five V, and to each their own. I heard uh, Slicey saying earlier that he's saving up or going to get a WRX in the future. Oh, um, been know, there, yeah, done that. Yep, yeah, we used to own a WRX. Yeah. Loved that. <laughs> <laughs> loved that car. Um, that was actually Molly's last stick shift car. Yeah. It was a six speed. We had, it was the bug eye. It was 2002 blue wagon, uh, WRX wagon. It was a great car. But we had to get rid of it because the baby car seat didn't yeah, really rear, work well. Rear facing car seats uh, when our daughter was born. 
had just put the kibosh on that, but it was I I'd put a manual boost controller on that thing, done a little work to it. Actually, had a bigger intercooler and a cold air intake, a few little items, and it it rolled out. It was a fun little car. You want the pop pops? Hmm. But uh, so I think I'll probably round off these corners. Oh, Lavender Pants has a wagon right now. You got a WRX wagon? Hmm. Nice. How much did the Russian cost, and what's the name and model? Uh, this particular model right here is the Shredni, Shredni, Shredni. I don't know something like, that. something like that. Um, it's you want that fart pipe, Slazy. That's what you want. That's what I call it. It is S R E D N I Y. Uh, basically, it means medium or middle. Thanks to one of the viewers uh, passed along that information. So, so, uh, yeah, cool, really cool knife. I almost forgot because we haven't talked about it at all. I want everyone that's in the, the live chat right now to tell me what kind of blade is on this knife right here. Oh, <laughs> uh, everybody, Controversy. <laughs> yeah, everybody just, just throw out in the comments, this blade, the Tucson TS 195. What kind of blade is this? Yeah. Manual. Warren Cliff, Warren Cliff. So we got Mikey says Warren Cliff, Zach says Warren Cliff, uh, Kellen says M390. Yes, it is M390, but I'm talking blade shape. So Warren Cliff, Warney, Warren Cliff, Warren Cliff, Warren. Oh no! Oh wow! Okay, we're all wrong. We're all wrong. Okay, so because here's Lord Knife Master himself. Okay, here's the deal, guys. So uh, the other day I did a little uh, video on this very knife, the 195. And uh, I in the in the video, <laughs> Thanks, I BJ. <laughs> Goddamn Warren Cliff, that's right. In the video, I say that this has a Warren Cliff blade. So later, uh, I have a guy that and, is a steel blade. <laughs> <laughs> and Good job, Nate. If if you guys want to go back and check it out, you can check it out in the video of the the TS one ninety five. Uh, the guy's name is Richard Davis, if you want to go and add to the comment. But you can see all the things that were written. Um, he says to me that uh, that this is not a Warncliffe blade, and I need to know my, te or know my subjects before I do reviews or something along those lines. To which um, I respond back and say, yes, it is a Warncliffe. And then he responds with the historical accurate Warncliffe. So... Real quick, I want to throw it out there. Uh, this, the Spider Coast Swayback, this is a historically correct Warren Cliff blade. Okay. And what makes it so is the either drop point or rounded spine coming down to the tip. Uh, but the point is, and I said this to him in the comments. Welcome, Nick. Uh, I wasn't. I didn't call this a Warren Cliff because I thought that that was uh, historically correct. And my video was not the history of the Warren Cliff blade. Um, but, but I was doing a review uh, on a modern knife and I was using modern terminology to describe said knife. So, you know, for people that are watching, everybody agrees that this is a Warren Cliff blade and this guy guy is furious because he says we're all being led around by the nose because I told him to go ahead and call Spyderco and tell them that they're wrong when they call the Yojimbo a Warncliffe and and I'm sure that they'll get right on it and correct it and thank him for pointing out their glaring mistakes. Uh, anyway, it was just something that it just blew my mind why someone has enough time to even worry about this. We um, have some people saying it's a sax. Yeah, well, a sax, so a Viking sax would be like this right here, um, and that is true. Uh, and and Warncliffe really is just a modified sax, because the sax came way, way sooner. Uh, no doubt. So <laughs> Slicey. He says, the hide user button is your friend. They don't even know they're hidden. Yeah. You just keep shouting into the ether. <laughs> yeah, but I want to see what... It, yeah. I would love the hide user button if I could continue to read what he was putting out there. The point of this is, 
is, is don't that, be high and mighty about everything. Yeah, and, and so he went on this rant saying that that I refuse to learn from somebody that has more experience and knowledge in years than I do, which is completely untrue. Talking I love to you history. Like you're a Fourteen year old kid that yeah. knows nothing. Yeah, and I love history, and and I would love to learn, but I don't want to learn from an asshole. So if he would have approached me and said, "Hey, you know that's." actually not historically correct a, a warren cliff is this or that or what you know but instead he came off as an asshole right <clears throat> however have a little decorum when the, opening conversations the, the other thing here <laughs> is is that terminology changes over time and and something that was called a warren cliff back in the 1800s doesn't necessarily mean that it's called the exact same thing today but there's many many examples of this uh, term terms change and have different meanings, uh, you know, exactly, after right. decades or you know centuries, millennia. <laughs> Richard knows everything. Yeah, I think uh, there. Yeah, the Russian knife. It's there's no brand name, right? Mechanic. Oh, okay. It's M A uh, M E H A N I K. Mahanic custom knives. That's Mother Russia in Russia. No, I'm <laughs> yeah. just kidding. I have no idea. So the guy's doing phenomenal work, especially for the money. The action on it is phenomenal. Uh, and, you know, getting really crazy high-end blade steels. The guy does... Uh, I haven't really put this to the test yet, but from what I understand, the guy does really good heat treats. Um, you know, really cool hand rub, satin, CPM S125V blade. <clears throat> titanium, everything. I mean, super high-end materials here and prices that are, uh, you know, what you would pay for a Riot. So, you know, you can actually buy something like this cheaper than what you can buy a CKF knife. And for those that don't <laughs> know, you know, a bunch of the CKF stuff or custom knife factory. <laughs> a lot of people think those are Russian knives. They're actually not. They're all made in China. They're just assembled in Russia. And then shipped overseas. Oh, uh, Taz says it's made from old statues of Stalin and the souls of the worker. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. So, gorgeous knife. And, uh... Yeah, I hate that Russian. I'm sick of hearing about it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I really just am giving him crap because he's giving me crap. Saying, oh, look at this sexy Russian mail order I got. Well, it's just funny, it, just the whole, you know, Russian mail order bride thing and blah, blah, blah. And it's the fact that I waited on it for so damn long. Um, he was tracking it by the time tracking decided to expire, continue to update again, then it was on. Like, well, yeah, I mean, because it had been it had been missing for months, months. Yeah. literally months. I thought for sure it was lost. Uh, I'm blown away that it actually made it here. Nate wants to know where he can buy one. Uh, check out Mechanic Custom Knives on Instagram. Why isn't the one on the right a sheep's foot? Because it doesn't have a curved belly? The one on the right. I don't know. This would be a good representation of a sheep's foot blade. But, again, these are all relative because, you know, one of the names that drives me batshit crazy. Uh, let me see if I have. We knew you had a problem, Slicey. You didn't have to. Tell oh, us. hey, real quick. Uh, I don't know if everybody saw this. This is the uh, Amari Knives Field Bro. Uh, I've had this for a few weeks, and I actually quite like this knife. Um, exactly, but, Taz. But I really like it at its uh, cheap price that you can get on drop. And right now, these are available for pre-order on drop for 50 bucks, uh, but they only come in Jade G10. So you can dye it whatever color you want. Uh, but it's a pretty cool knife for 50 bucks. Welcome back, son. So if you want to check them out, they're available right now on Drop. Uh, if you want to use me to refer as a friend or whatever so I get a little bit of a deal, that would be amazing. Um, but Thank you don't have to do that. Thank you, Nate. You're awesome, too. Um, so, yeah. If, if you do go and... Uh, uh, buy one um i don't even i don't know how the refer thing works i have never done it but i know that they do the friend referral thing all the time i'm just saying it's available it's 50 bucks what's the seal on that uh vg10 
uh, but standard price, like on Blade HQ or anywhere else, it's like $94 for this knife. Um, and it's great. It's similar in, you know, similar to the bug out, the DECA, it's uh, G10, VG10, uh, access lock, deep carry clip. It's reversible right or left, tip up only. A little bit bigger than the bug out. Uh, cool knife and definitely worth 50 bucks if you're interested. Holy crap. <laughs> I just wanted to get it out there because it. Uh, I just saw that they were available uh, in the Jade G10. And, and then also that Gareth Bull Mari uh, is pretty cool. Also, it's available on there for pre-order right now as well. So, yeah. Trying to do labs and they aren't what else? working. Labs? What are we talking about? I don't know. Mike says, I'm back. Okay. Trying to do labs and they aren't working. Are you scientisting while you listen? Yeah, I don't know. Are you, you you're gonna science the shit out of this you, or what? Are you sciencing the shit out of something? <laughs> you're gonna do labs and it's not working. How big is the rushing compared to the bug out? Let me show you. And what's the knife on the bottom? For physics, yeah. So there's the Russian between the Deca and the bug out with the pivots kind of lined up there. <laughs> I mean, Gene says meth. <laughs> uh, uh, do you still have the void? Uh, well, I, it's in my currently in my possession, but it's actually in a box that I need to drop off at the post office tomorrow. And it's Thanks, being Zach. shipped out to a, a very nice gentleman. Oh, thank you so much, Zach. He says, thanks for sharing your Russian with us. The fake versus real bug out. Of course, main shout out to the marketing department. <laughs> now science. <laughs> now science. Yeah. Thank you so much, Zach. I really appreciate it, sir. And don't forget law. I'm in the law department, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She's the legal marketing, you know, all that. Those things. Tech. <laughs> so I've got a couple other... Uh, Knives that I don't think I've really shown at all. And I actually did, uh, I already anodized this one just because it showed up when I had my anodizing stuff out doing some other projects. So this is the Tucson TS-117 Grandpa. Ooh, that sucks, Mikey. Good luck. Do your work. Did a little, little bronze carbon fiber action on this guy. Do you like the bug out or the Deca better? Personally, I like the Deca better. Is that a Grandpa? This is a Grandpa. That grandpa looks sweet. Nice. Thank you. <laughs> Love the grandpa. Yay, science. Yeah. And it says grandpa on the clip? Yeah, it says grandpa on the clip. Like, yeah, uh, here we go. Grandpa. Grandpappy. That's what it should be, I say. That's my grandpappy. Wow, that looks dope. And I we love, also have... I love my grandpa. Have the gins... Sexy marketing department? Woo. Hey, look at that. Damn, did you hear that? I'm look sexy. At, nice. <laughs> look at the clip I just put on my DECA. Hey, look at that. That looks... Weird. Yeah, I don't know where that came from. I have no idea what knife that came off of, but it looks identical to the gin clip, other than I brushed it. Have you experienced the TS-227 yet? Uh, TS-227. Uh, which one's the 227? Scotty, what are you asking? The little little knife? Is that what you want to know? What is the little knife? I don't know what the little knife is. That little these little fucker. guys? Yeah. Oh, these are the uh, Damn Designs Gin. Go check out their website, Damn Designs. Uh, and this is... The handles are just like the Oni... Uh, but they had these here have a drop point blade instead of the Tonto. Uh, what was the 227? I don't remember. Uh, I don't it's remember. Larger and full micarta. Larger and full micarta. The 227? Mm -hmm. I have I have a whole bunch of Tucson micarta stuff on its way right at, currently. Uh, so maybe it's in there. Yeah, I maybe I. Yeah, the two, I don't know. I don't know. Is the titanium a different steel than D2? 
is the type. I, uh, we're talking the on the gin. Is the so, TI a yes. diff steel? Yes. So the G10 version has D2 blade steel. Uh, there you can see it says damned right there. And on the back side it says D2. No, the grandpa is not part of the giveaway. No. Uh, the Thai version is uh, S35VN. Right there you can see it. So those are your two blade steel options from Dam Designs for this particular model, either D2 or S35VN. Personally, um, I like the, I wish they would have done the G10 version with the higher end blade steel uh, because it, the it's hard for me not to have my fingers on the lock bar with something this small. And I mean, it, it does work well. I just, I like the G10 version better. Um, Action's a little bit better. The detent's not quite as strong on this. Uh, but I'm not the biggest fan of D2. So, you know, S35VN and G10 would have been awesome here. Um, did, but... Did the Lion Steel TRE sell? Um, that Poongooch looks so comfy. <laughs> yeah, it is comfy. Uh, I, honestly, I can't remember. I'll have to go back and look. I know I had several emails about it, but I don't. I do not remember if it's gone or not. I had um, too much, too much, too many things going on. How do you spell their name? What Dijin? Uh, D J I N N. Uh, if you go on Damn Designs website, you'll see them on there, uh, along with the Oni and several other models. Pretty cool little knives, though. I like the little drop point blade. Personally, I like it maybe. The Oni was cool. Uh, I like them both, but I think I like the drop point better than the Tanto. Um, I just think it looks a little better. And I think both of them functionally are really, really good. Uh, so great little box cutters here, little box openers. So, and I like the deep carry clip better than the, the milled titanium clip. So cool little knives for sure. So yeah, right on. Too small for you, Kyle. Yeah, they're definitely small. There's no doubt about that. Oh, I saw this earlier, Nate. I just... There was talking and stuff. Uh, what are your thoughts on Kickstarter knives? I don't like Kickstarter. I'm not a fan. <laughs> I've never been a fan. I think it's a, a poor platform to release stuff. And I, I, I dislike it even more now that established companies that certainly have the money to fund their own projects yeah, keep going their... back to Kickstarter. Yeah, when they need to use their capital. When they, yeah, it just, and they're just throwing money away. Well, yeah, and the the fees are tremendous. It's I'm just not a fan. I don't like the platform all the way around. I would much rather, and I understand why guys need to do it. I, it's it, this is a personal thing for me. Um, I just don't like I don't like the whole platform, um, and I would much rather see, um, you know, like for example, David with the with the Orion Solaris. David already had a really good network. Uh, built in with all the YouTube stuff in order to sell his knife. In my opinion, Kickstarter is doing nothing for David. David did all of his own legwork and, but yet Kickstarter is going to take a cut of what he sells. Um, and all they're doing is literally hosting the, the actual web page. They're not marketing it for him. They're not, you know, nobody's, nobody's going to Kickstarter to look for uh, that knife. And just, you know, maybe some people just stumble across it. But most people are going there because they saw David's knife on somebody's channel and they want to go and purchase the Orion Solaris. And so I feel like David Hi, would have been better off to to, to just take pre-orders and, and do it that way. Is um, the Fantasy Navy but that's me. Native 5 still for sale? You mean the, Fancy maybe? The fancy, oh, the fish, the native fish five, one? the Able Reels one? Yes, that one is did not sell. Uh, I don't know if Slicey Dicey is still in here or not, but I heard you talking when I was getting set up here about uh, a Maximet Para 3. You can see right here, I know that you like the lightweight as well. Here's the Maximet blade. I pulled it out of my gray handle and put it in the lightweight frame, so you get the best of both worlds. 
the Maximet blade, lightweight frame. It's the way to go. So. I think he probably got cut off by his wife. Oh, gotcha. Because he's not saying. <laughs> oh. Metal Complex called him, so he had to go. Oh. <laughs> What's a good Tucson that you would recommend? Oh, good God. There's oh, tons of them. And they do they make CPM 10V man, Manix? Uh, 10V? I don't know of a 10V Manix. I mean, there's a couple 10V Spider Coves. Um, I have one right here. And as for the Tucson, probably here's all the, of them. Here's the 10V Spider Co. And here... Got him, Zach. Here is a 10V fixed blade. Uh, so there you go. There's some 10V for you for the face balls. Give you some 10V. Yeah. Holy shit, you guys. As far as um, two sons, this one here is a fantastic knife. Uh, the 195, good one. M390 full titanium. The 186, King Fisher. Awesome one if you like a front flipper. Uh the two the Tucson TS191, another amazing knife, absolutely gorgeous. This one's an S90V. And I could go on and on and on. The grandpa, this is the Tucson TS117, although it just recently came out. Um, and it's a gorgeous knife. Uh really cool. It's kind of a modern traditional thing. This is a Max Chanik design. Um Great knife. What's that fixed blade? The 129. Awesome knife. So, yeah, tons of Tucson. Check out my videos in my library. I got tons of them. Uh, the fixed blade. This is a Pearson Custom Knives. This was made, a uh, handmade knife by Ryan Pearson. You can see it's red, white, and blue. He <laughs> needs me a pawpaw. It is uh, blue micarta with red and white scale or liners. 10V blade steel. You can see there, Pearson. Uh, this model here is called the Titan. And it is beautiful in hand. It's got a forward choil area. It's a beast. Uh, I Review is coming on this probably this week. It's an amazing knife. I feel bad that I haven't gotten the review done, but I've enjoyed it. It's an amazing knife. Um, I was really hoping that I was going to get uh, a little custom sheath made for this by now, but I haven't uh, had a chance to get that done yet. So, uh, yeah, it is what it is. But this is the, the sheath that it, it shipped with. Uh, and it works fine. Uh, but I am going to... something gonna, a little different. Yeah, I'm going to do something a little different with it. I just haven't had a chance to do it yet. So, um, What's the most you've paid for a Tucson? The most I've paid for a Tucson? Uh-huh. Uh, I, I honestly, I, uh, maybe $115, something like that. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe not even that. Cool. Charles Chaw, you shouldn't be buying a fake anything ever. Don't give those people bought, your bought money a, knowingly. A fake what? Bug out. Oh. Yeah, that's uh Yeah, it is what it is. He just wanted to uh see the difference. Yeah, well this fake bug out right here, it's uh I mean I'm not hundred percent sure what the materials are, but but it is definitely uh, very, very similar and close to the real thing. There's no doubt about that. So. What doesn't he want to say with his wife in the room, Nate? What's this? I don't know. I don't know. Yes, the Able Reels Native 5. Still have it. Yeah, I still have it. If you're interested in that, uh, send me an email. Info at OCD for EDC dot com. <laughs> he says, y'all are going to make me buy my first safe queen. Because <laughs> it's too damn pretty to get the scales scratched. Yeah. Is that is he talking about the Able Reels one? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, they're gorgeous, man. I, they really are. Yeah, it's a uh, warning, Taz. We settled it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because... This, this is a warning, Cliff. I, you know, personally, oh. <laughs> a, a sax, I don't know that you could call it a sax because um, I think a sax is only going to refer to a fixed blade. Um, but, you know, a lot of people today call this particular shape right here a reverse tanto, which makes no sense to me because this portion isn't sharpened. Uh, so I don't really get that at all. I personally don't use the reverse tanto. Uh, Bye, Zach. Terminology. Uh, I just don't agree with it. I don't like it. Uh, but, you know, to each their own. And that's what I mean about things changing over time. Um, if this were a fixed blade with this type of blade shape, it would every bit be called a sax. <clears throat> uh, but, you know, it is what it is. It be what it be. It be what it be. There you no go. No need to nitpick, I guess. No, no. Yeah. Uh, you know, really, you could just call know, everything a modified version of something, right? He says, Molly, it's 27 minutes past your bedtime. I yeah. know, I know. Yeah. Yeah, she's she's already slowing down and you know all that stuff. So Can't anyway, stop yawning and my eyes are watering <laughs> and nose is running. So guys, get over to drop if uh, if you guys are interested in the field, bro. I think that one had ten or twelve days left on it. Fifty bucks is a it, it's a pretty smoking deal for this knife. I think it's a good one, especially for fifty bucks. So if you're interested, go check out um, check out Mechanic Knives on Instagram. Uh, yeah, Pearson Custom Knives, Ryan and Rodney, they do awesome work. Uh, so, yeah, definitely. Uh, anybody got any questions or anything? Stud says you should uh, blade swap the Dijin if you <laughs> like the G10 better. Well, these two are not mine. Uh, these two were sent to me in the Apex Pass Around group. So I cannot do that with these two. If they were mine, I absolutely would. I would swap them and sell the other one or something. Who's your know. USA Wee Knife Rep? Uh, the USA Wee Knife Rep is Terrell or Zelric. Uh, Old man's ready for bed, too. Yep. <laughs> He's coming over here saying, Mom, let's go to bed. Yep. So, what else you got? Um, dude's talking. Is the K2 ever nope. going to There he is sale? right there. Rodney Pearson. I just saw him in the comments. It was Rodney and Ryan. They can hook you up with this sweet yeah. Titan right here. Rodney says, Ryan's the man. I'm the helper. <laughs> yeah, okay. That's fine. But, oh, but you can contact is, either one of them. Is pronounced Jin. I I wonder. Jin. Isn't yeah. that what I said? Was Jin or no? What, okay, whatever. <clears throat> Sounds good. What you said something about the K two? Is the K two ever going to be for sale? Uh, this K two right here. Yeah, that one. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah. So negative. Ghost Rider. <laughs> That one... Uh, Everybody stop asking. Yeah, this one's mine, and it's going to stay mine and be mine. Um, yeah, and it's just, it's my K2. You mean the alcohol that tastes like um, Christmas trees? <laughs> oh, Tangare? Gin, just oh. gin. Well, slow gin doesn't taste like Christmas trees, I promise you. Oh, I've never had slow gin. Tangare tastes like Christmas trees. And that's a Tangare thing that's exclusive to Tangare. Oh. That's hmm. not just gin across the board. I didn't know that. That's not my drink of choice, yeah. and Tangare is the Tangare only one I've had. Tangare yeah, fucked up now. <laughs> <laughs> is this way back available? Uh, nope, it is not. Uh, that one's actually uh, shipping down the road here in just a couple of days as well. But I will, uh, oop, I will let you look at it. Ooh, I didn't know Real that. Real nice and easy and close like. A third of the human popula population is allergic to juniper berries, hence why so many people have nightmare stories with gin. Hmm. Did not know that. Yeah. 
Have you got plans to mod your GPB1 knife? Uh, yeah, definitely. I'm uh, th That one's definitely going to get some anno work on it. Faux show. I, Winchester, uh, I only talk about that gin and juice life because of the song. I don't actually drink gin often. Sometimes I, I'll have a, some drinks of Justin's Tangeray and Tonic, and yeah. my I, my liquor choices are elsewhere. I I, I actually like Tangeray and Tonic, so I will drink that. Um, I, not a ton, I, you know, but it's like a couple times a year kind of thing. I'll I'll bust into the Tangeray and Tonic. Well, I like the Tangeray tan, tan, fucking tan. I like juice. Gin's <laughs> your jam. Gin's my jam, huh? I'm more of a, like, rum, rum and coke. Yeah, I like, uh, I like Tito's. I like vodka. I like my, Moscow Mules. My standard kind of go-to is if people are familiar with Greyhounds. <laughs> no, I'm not like, singing you out of the show tonight. I, I like, uh, uh, Tito's, either, either like Tito's or, uh, oh, what's another good... Oh, Crown what? and Sprite's good, BJ. Yeah, that yep, that works. Have you had Peach Crown and Iced Tea? Seven and Seven. That's a good one. Peach Crown and Iced Tea's so good. It is really good. But I like uh, vodka and grapefruit juice. Kettle One, yep. That's oh, that's, good. that's 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 actually the one I was thinking of. Kettle yeah. One. Um, we have a big ass bottle of Tito's over there, so that's why I was looking at. But yeah, Kettle One or Tito's, digging them. Faux show. Peanut so. butter whiskey? Mm, no. I didn't even know that that was a thing. No. I'm not a whiskey fan anyway. Man, I, peanut butter whiskey? That doesn't sound good no. at all. Molly honestly. and y'all be drinking some hood-ass alcohol brands. <laughs> hood-ass alcohol brands? We were I didn't say Colt 45. Right. I'm not having old English. <laughs> yeah, we ain't drinking no OE up in here. Apparently, you don't know what the hood is, son. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what the hood's like where you're at, but but where we comes from, the hood, they be drinking OE. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Get them 40s. That's right. All right. We should probably wrap it up. So, thanks a lot, guys. Uh, hope everybody had a good time. We looked at a whole bunch of crap, talked a lot of shit tonight. <laughs> for those heard golf syrup. For those, yeah, right? For, for those that were new here tonight, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Yeah, welcome. We didn't scare you off or whatever. Uh, that was a pretty tame night, to it, be yeah, honest. Yeah, it was. It was pretty tame. So, um, But anyway, we'll close you out with the uh, sweet, sweet side of the first Russian. So, just to make my wife do that right there, sigh before she goes to bed. <laughs> I... I think we need to separate. <laughs> <laughs> that that hand rub on that blade is nice. Mm. So anyway, guys, uh, thanks so much. Hope everybody has a wonderful week. Uh, hit me up in the comments, email, whatever. If you got something you want to chat about, uh, and we will catch you singing. next time. Jesus, I'm not singing. Bye. Bye.